So behind me currently is my daily driver 2009 Subaru SGT commonly known as the WRX and today I'm going to be converting it to speed density. So stay tuned. So this is a 2009 Subaru SGT commonly known as a WRX in some parts of the world and today I'm going to be converting it to speed density so I'm going to take you guys along for the ride so under the hood we have an EJ20X just a 2 liter higher compression turbocharged engine from Subaru this was a JDM exclusive engine completely stock right and what we mean by speed density is that Subaru uses a mass airflow sensor this sensor here to control all the fuel in for fuel all the parameters sorry for fuel and spark in the factory ECU right so what I'm going to be doing now is that there is also a map sensor on board so there are two different ways that the ECUs can do fuel in control so with standalone ECUs we typically use a manifold absolute pressure sensor commonly known as a map sensor to do fueling so what it does it calculates the pressure in the engine in the intake manifold and air temperature and it does it calculates the fueling required based on the pressure and the air temperature and a few other things in the background but what Subaru does and a bunch of other factory ECUs is that they use a mass sensor mass airflow MAF to measure the amount of air both have their pluses and their negatives advantages and disadvantages but that is not important for now but why would i want to change something like that so let me show you my rationale behind that number one familiarity i'm a lot more familiar with map based tuning although this works just well and i have no problem doing a map based but familiarity i can go for a map based system map a lot quicker than a math based system the other thing is that Subaru parts for whatever reason are ridiculously expensive what I mean by that is intakes for instance a pipe which should probably go from here to here with a filter of some sort on board and a flange bolt on the math sensor we're looking at four to five hundred dollars depends on which one you end up getting that is ridiculous no other manufacturer for these affordable type cars sell parts so so expensive so with the math sensor what happens is that to calibrate it anytime you change anything in the math track so air filter intake intercooler or anything you typically you have to recalibrate the car or uh, the math sensor skin it's all part of tuning what happens is that you get an expensive part like there's an expensive intake and you have to recalibrate that with a map based system speed density based system you don't have to do that as long as volumetric efficiency stays the same so you're not making wild changes the tune for the most part does not really change subaru on the other hand can work both ways so what i'm going to do today is to convert this right so another thing i intend to do is that the parts i'm going to be throwing on this car I'm not going to be buying the typical of the shelf Subaru parts because every single Subaru part is expensive and you can get very good results out of this engine and Subaru on the whole. If we do some aftermarket mods for one, yes, we cannot get around that, but a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of thinking outside of the box, we can achieve that. So number one, I'm going to convert the car to speed density. Right, so speed density, I will for the time being have to keep the math on board since the math also does the air temperature and I need air temperature as well. But in a couple of days, I'm awaiting some new sensors to come in is that I'm going to ditch this all together. And then I am just going to install my air temp sensor on the intercooler, cold side anyways, that's where it's supposed to be, not here. This is giving you an inaccurate reading for what we intend to do for speed density. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw on a base tune on the car. I'm going to throw a base tune and then I'm going to show you that the car runs We've had the math sensor and that will be the basis for the next round of mods. So I do intend on putting a couple more videos out on this car and I will, it's my daily driver. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be a 10 second bill or anything, but I mean, my goal is to get a car down into the 13th consistently, 13 second quarter mile or uh, 
each second one is mile time as the goal for the car currently i think the last time i ran a drag in that car that car was somewhere in the mid 14 seconds um or they about so let me just pro a quick base tune on the car and then i'll show you quick demonstration of the car running in speed density without the math sensor okay so we are now fully speed density and I can give you a demonstration if I can do this if one hand. I will go ahead and I'll disconnect the map sensor for you. Right? So you did hear the RPM change a little bit. Again, that is because the air temp sensor is still in the map sensor and I need that for air temp correction. But in a few days, I hope to just ditch this all together and put the air temp sensor in the intercooler. I'm gonna plug this back in. Give the RPM change a little bit. The other thing you can do, and a lot of Subaru guys want to do, is this. This is the factory bypass valve, and with a math-based system, you have you cannot vent this to atmosphere. You have to vent it back in there. So with a speed density, it does not really matter. You can take this off altogether, or cut this off, and then put in your favorite blow valve of choice. Make as much noise as you want if that floats your boat. So we can go on the inside and then we can see that now we can run the car like this. So you can have some fun driving around, put a HKS SSQ or whatever loud blow valve you want to put. And then now I can put whatever intake I want on this car. If you want, you can bend something up, custom, send it here, send it through the headlight. It does not matter with speed density. So that is just, this is just some of the pluses. Another thing is that you, when you speed into it, you're pretty much bridging the gap between the factory ECU and the standalone. The standalone still has a few things over the factory ECU, but for the most part, we're bridging the gap. All right, so let me show you on the inside how the car revs and everything with the speed density base ROM, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, so on the inside, we can see that everything is here. My laptop is here. And for the most part, the car is running on speed density same pretty much as it would be doing with the the math airflow sensor i'll show you that you can rev up and then now you can actually hear the blow of our sound so if that floats your boat i mean i disconnected it for the demonstration yeah so you have these sounds if that floats your boat <laughs> i'm a little bit too old for sound so again so that is essentially bridging the gap between a standalone ecu and the factory ecu so going forward i will be just running a kind of speed density since it's a bit easier for me to do and i mean in line with the mods i intend to do with the car i'm not going to be buying a carb or pairing intake anytime soon I'm, i cannot justify spending 500 us dollars on an intake and you can probably build that for a few bucks so going forward i'm going to be throwing a couple mods on there but my goal for now is to get the car into the 15 second bracket or uh, each second um, one if mile time on completely stock engine i think that would be very cool i think it's very easy to do anyways so look out for that video in the upcoming days or weeks i don't know when i get around to doing that and for the most part now recap the car is running speed density and it's gonna get fun from here on out so until next time guys stay safe Take care. Catch you guys later.